How do you talk to your nine-year-old daughter about an upcoming miscarriage? Hi, my name is Kent Toussaint. Welcome to Tips on Teens. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm here at Teen Therapy Center in Woodland Hills, California, where every Wednesday at noon, I answer your parenting questions that you email to us or message us through Facebook or however you'd like to send us your message, your, your questions. Keep them coming. Let's jump into today's question. I'm 16 weeks pregnant, and there are some dangerous signs that the baby is unhealthy and may not make it to term. My husband and I are so scared and confused. My question is about my nine-year-old daughter who has wanted a baby brother since she could talk. We finally got pregnant after years of trying, and it's a boy, and now it looks like we're going to lose him. I don't know how to explain this to a nine-year-old. This is so emotional for my husband and I, but I don't want this to scar our daughter. How do we tell her and minimize her pain? Uh, first, <clears throat> excuse me, my heart really goes out to you uh, and your husband. Um, like many people who are gonna watch this video, including myself, uh, the pain of losing a pregnancy, uh, we know all too well. Um, it's, it's tragic, it is devastating, it is heart-wrenching. Um, and all too familiar to a lot of people, even though it's kind of this taboo topic that no one likes to talk about, uh, but it's a really common thing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. What I'd recommend uh, first is just be honest with your daughter. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to explain it in a different way. Just be direct. She's going to understand. Uh, she's going to follow your lead. Um, while this is devastating for you, and I get that it is devastating and it is heart-wrenching, you're going to get through this um, for a multitude of reasons. Number one, you have to because you have a nine-year-old little girl who needs you. So you have to get through this to be able to be strong for her. Um, she needs to see how to get through tragedy, how, and you're the model for her to do that. So it's important that you and your husband are leaning on each other for support. You're leaning on external sources of support, whether that's your therapist, your rabbi, your minister, your sister, your parents, you know, maybe several different sources of, of support. Um, but it's okay to have those feelings. And I would say that it's okay for you to share those feelings of sadness uh, with your daughter and be open about it. Don't try to hide those feelings. It, those feelings are normal. Those feelings of grief are necessary to get through the process. Where you want to be careful is putting your daughter in a position where she has to take care of your feelings because she's not qualified to do that. Um, <coughs> you can still be sad and still take care of her. So as long as you are demonstrating that you can be sad and still be okay and still get through this, even though it's a process, even though it's painful, even though you don't always see how you're going to get through it, the trust that you will get through this is going to help your daughter follow your lead. And if you have any religious or spiritual faith or beliefs, um, most of those beliefs do involve death and passing on in some way, and that may help uh, explain things. Um, finding a, a clear-cut explanation of why this is happening, you're never going to find that because you know that's the life. That's been that's a philosophical philosophical conversation we've been having for thousands of years that we still haven't come up with solutions for. Um, so you're not going to come up with one now um, to explain or understand or just you know say hey death is great. It's not. It stinks. Um, so I think it's really important that you are taking care of yourself so you can take care of your daughter and demonstrate how to get through this. I encourage you to uh, have a ritual. Uh, to say goodbye to the baby or to welcome that baby soul into your family. I know for our family, the baby that we lost, we talk about that baby all the time. That baby's like a regular part of our family. Um, and it's not become a source of sadness for the most part. It's of course of, oh yeah, that's just how it is. You know, we never even actually had a full name for the baby, so, but we had a nickname that our five-year-old at the time gave the baby and that's the name that stuck. So I don't know if you have a nickname for the baby or if you came up with a name. Um, but that name is fine and let that name live in your house and be honored and be celebrated uh, just like any other member of the family. Um, it's okay to have that too. Um, that baby's soul or spirit or energy or however you see it, um, 
what is a part of your family as of now or you know and will be for you know going forward too it's a tough situation um the big thing i want to just help you understand is don't try to avoid it don't try to pretend it didn't happen as it did and the more you embrace it uh the more you guys will get through it again a tough topic tough discussion make sure you're getting your support you need it's really important that you help yourself so you can help your daughter and any future children that you may have anyways that's our question for today thanks for tuning in if you have a question you'd like me to answer you can email us at tips on teens at teen therapy center.com or just direct messages right here on facebook we love to hear from you again my name is kent toussaint licensed family therapist at teen therapy center and i will see you guys next wednesday at noon bye bye